Hi, Peralta third grade. Um, I thought I'd share with you a story that I love about a baby hippo and a tortoise. Uh, the baby hippo's name is Owen, and the tortoise is Mazé. It's a it's a um, African name. This is the true story of a remarkable friendship. Here's a picture of them in the Kenyan, a uh, Kenyan zoo of some sort. Owen and Mazze, the true story of a remarkable friendship. This is told by Isabella Hatkoff and Craig Hatkoff and Dr. Paula Kamhumba. Kamhumba. This is the true story, I'll wait for you. This is the true story of two great friends, a baby hippopotamus named Owen and a 130-year-old giant tortoise named Emzi. The hippo was not always friends with the tortoise. He wasn't always known as Owen, and Owen was not always famous the world over. Here is how it all happened. Before the baby hippopotamus became known as Owen, he lived with his mother in a group or pod with about 20 other hippos. They fed and wallowed in and around the Sabaki River in Kenya, a nation on the east coast of Africa. When he was about one year old, heavy December rains flooded the river. The racing water washed Owen and his family down the river until the fresh water became salty and the river flowed into the Indian Ocean near the small coastal town of Malindi. For days, the people of Malindi tried to chase the hippos back up the river, but the hippos enjoyed grazing the grasses along the shore and in the villagers' yards. Since hippos are the most dangerous animal in Africa, and a full-grown adult can weigh as much as 8,000 pounds, there was little the people could do. On the morning of December 26, 2004, the sea suddenly rushed high onto the beaches and the surging water pounded the shore. Many of the villagers' boats were damaged and many fishermen had to be rescued. Before long, the sea was calm again, but it was a frightening time for everybody. A day passed before anyone thought to check on the hippos. The villagers now saw only one hippopotamus in the sea a baby without his mother stranded on a sandy coral reef among the seagrass. Tired and frightened, he was unable to reach the shore on his own. Soon, hundreds of villagers and visitors were working together to help the young hippo. They knew that he would become sick if he stayed in the salty seawater for long. They used ropes, boats, fishing nets, and even cars to try to rescue him and bring him ashore to safety. It was soon clear that a rescue wouldn't be easy. Though the baby hippo was only about two feet tall, he weighed a hefty 600 pounds and was slippery and strong. And the hippo was alarmed by all the human commotion. Angrily, he broke through the nets and escaped from their, t their ropes. Hours went by and the anxious crowds of people who gathered to watch feared that the hippo could not be saved. Finally, with a strong shark net, the rescuers were able to catch the hippo. A brave visitor named Owen Sobin, Sobin tackled him, stopped him long enough to, to let others secure the net. That is why when it came to time to choose a name for the hippo, it seemed only right that he should be called Owen. At last, the rescuers towed the baby hippo toward land. When they reached the shore, a loud, joyous cheer went up from the thousand men, women, boys, and girls who now crowded the beach. Their happy cries could be heard almost a mile away. Wrapped in the net, Owen was hoisted into the back of a pickup truck and brought to a shady spot. People weren't always sure where Owen should be taken next. They called 
Tyler Park, an animal sanctuary about 15, 50 miles away near the city of Mombasa. Dr. Paula Kahumba, the manager, immediately offered Owen a place to live there. She explained that he could never be returned to the wild. Since he was a baby, he wouldn't have learned how yet to fend for himself, and he would never be welcomed into another hippopod. He would, he would be seen as an intruder and attacked. But they would take good, take good care of him in Howler Park. Dr. Paula offered to drive to Melindy herself to bring Owen to his new home. Dr. Paula knew she would need help. She asked the chief animal caretaker, Stephen Tui, I don't want to say it, to come along with her. She knew that Stephen had a special way with animals. Some people said he could even talk to them. Dr. Paula and Stephen quickly set off in her small truck to Melindy. Meanwhile, a college Sabine Bauer, Kate Bayer, I don't know how to say that one either, got to work with others at Howler Park to prepare for Owen's arrival. You see them here, and it looks like it's an animal back there. Yeah, so deer kind of... eating carrots. Here's the hippo here. They're keeping him wet. He has to stay wet, I think. When Dr. Paula and Stephen arrived in Melindy, they helped to remove the nets and lead Owen out of the pickup. But Owen became angrier than ever and charged at the people who gathered around. He tried to help, they tried to help him calm down by wrapping a blanket around his head. That way he wouldn't see the things that were upsetting him. But Owen was angry about that too. After many hours, about a dozen rescuers managed to move Owen from the pickup truck into Dr. Paula's truck. Trying not try, tying him so that he would be safe during the long drive to Howler Park. Meanwhile, Sabine and other workers prepared a large enclosure for Owen. They chose a part of the park that had a pond and a mud wallow, as well as tall trees and brush, everything a hippo could want. The area was already home to a number of bushbacks, vervet monkeys, and a giant aldabra tortoise called Emzi. Emzi, which means wise old man in the Swahili language, was the oldest creature in the park. At about 130 years of age, he had been alive before Stephen's great-grandmother was born. He wasn't very friendly, except to Stephen, who seemed to know just what he liked, such as getting tickled under the chin. Otherwise, Emzi kept to himself. No one could have guessed how Emzi's life was about to change. Finally, Dr. Paula and Stephen arrived with Owen, who was now weak and exhausted. As soon as the ropes that held him were untied, Owen scrambled from the truck directly to Emzi, resting in the corner of the enclosure. Owen crouched behind Emzi, the way baby hippos often hide behind their mothers for protection. At first, Emzi wasn't happy about this attention. He hissed at Owen and crawled away. But Owen, who could easily keep up with the old tortoise, did not give up. Slowly as the night went on, MZ began to accept his new companion. When the park workers checked on them in the morning, MZ was snuggled up against, excuse, Owen was snuggled up against MZ, and MZ didn't seem to mind at all. Over the next few days, MZ continued to crawl away and Owen continued to follow him. But sometimes it was Owen who would walk away from MZ and MZ would follow him, would, MZ who would follow. Bit by bit, Emzy grew friendlier. At first, Owen couldn't eat any of the leaves left out for him. Stephen and the other caretakers were worried that he would weaken even more. Then they noticed Owen feeding right next, right beside Emzy, as if Emzy was showing him how to eat. Or perhaps it was Emzy's protective presence that helped Owen feel calm enough to eat. No one will ever know, but it was clear that the bond between Owen and Emzy was helping the baby hippo to recover from being separated from his mother and stranded in the sea. As the weeks went on, Owen and Emzy spent more and more time together. Soon they were inseparable. Their bond remains very strong to this day. They swim together, eat together, drink together, and sleep next to each other. They rub noses. Owen leads the way to different parts of the enclosure. Then Emzy leads the way. 
Owen playfully nuzzles Emsie's neck, and Emsie stretches his neck forward, asking for more, just as she does when Stephen tickles him under the chin. Though both animals could easily injure each other, they are gentle with one another. A sense of trust has grown between them. Wildlife experts are still puzzled about how this unlikely friendship came to be. Most have never heard of a mammal such as Owen and a reptile such as Emsi forming such a strong bond. Perhaps for Owen it happened this way. Young hippos like Owen need their mothers in order to survive. An old slow tortoise like Emsi can never protect Owen the way a fierce mother hippo could. But since Emsi's coloring and rounded shape are similar to a hippo's, it's possible that Owen that to Owen, Emsi looks like the hippo mother he needs. Harder to explain is the affection that Emsi seems to show for Owen. Like most Aldabra tortoises, Emsi has always preferred to be alone. But sometimes these tortoises live in groups, and perhaps Emsi sees Owen as a fellow tortoise, the first tortoise he is willing to spend time with. Or perhaps Emsi knows that Owen isn't a tortoise, but likes him anyway. The reasons are unclear, but science can't always explain what the heart already knows. Our most important friends are sometimes those we least expected. News of the Owen and Emsie friendship quickly spread around the world. People all over have come to love Owen, who endured so much yet never gave up. Emsie, who became Owen's friend when he needed one most. Their photographs have appeared in countless newspaper and magazine articles, television programs, and even a film documentary have been made about them. Visitors come to Howler Park every day to meet the famous friends. Owen suffered a great loss, but with the help of many caring people and through his own extraordinary resilience, Owen has be begun a new happy life. Most remarkable is the role that MZ has played. We'll never know for sure whether Owen sees MZ as a mother a father or even or a very good friend but it really doesn't matter what matters is that owen isn't alone and neither is emsy and that is the true story of owen and emsy two great friends <laughs>